Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Let's get the latest uh, from our political correspondent, uh, Tamara Cohen. So, basically, a standoff. Mr Hunt says he wants public debates, but we're not going to get another public debate, what, until the 9th of July, is that right? As it stands, yes. Boris Johnson has said he's not going to take part uh, in head-to-head -head debates this week or has not answered our invitation to take part in one tomorrow. And Jeremy Hunt is really taking the gloves off and saying that he is pathetic. He's saying he's running scared, he's a coward, he's trying to rig the contest by not appearing in public. And Jeremy Hunt is very much pulling his punches on the issue of his private life. He's saying it's not a about that, He's, although he does say it's about Boris Johnson's wider character, but he says that Boris Johnson needs to answer questions about how he would get us out of the EU on the 31st of October. He says that will happen. He reiterates that again today in his column in the Daily Telegraph. It must happen. It will happen. But Jeremy Hunt says, what if you needed a general election in order to do it? How would you take us out with no deal? What would the details of that be? What if MPs in the Tory party would voted, and then some of them have threatened to do this, to bring the government Government down rather than let it go ahead. So he's accusing Boris Johnson of avoiding scrutiny and saying that that really matters on issues of policy. Jeremy Hunt is also saying that Boris Johnson is telling MPs in, among his very wide coalition of supporters very different things. He's telling MPs like Priti Patel that the withdrawal agreement is dead. We heard her to say that on Sky just now, that Boris Johnson won't be reviving that agreement. And yet Jeremy Hunt's saying that Boris Johnson's saying something very different to supporters like Matt Hancock, the health secretary, who didn't want no deal at all. This is what Matt Hancock told us earlier. The preference is that we leave on the 31st of October with a deal. That was what I proposed when I was uh, running uh, and uh, I didn't have enough uh, support to continue and I decided to back Boris because he is most likely to be able to get us to leave with a deal on the 31st of October. Look, I think that's the best way forward because I think it's important for this country that we deliver on the referendum result. And still, though, many Conservatives saying what matters is that Boris Johnson is the hard Brexiteer in this choice, mm -hmm. and that's more important than anything else. Well, the big question is, does this affect the views of Tory party members? And we'll only come to know that over the next three or four weeks, although many of them will be making their decisions in the next uh, couple of weeks when they receive their postal ballots. Do they say, as we heard from Sir John Knott, uh, former Defence Secretary there, look, doesn't matter, maybe they, didn't, maybe they were politically motivated, we're just going to carry on supporting him, or do they think this is uh, an indictment of his character? Boris Johnson clearly doesn't want to answer any questions about it, he didn't answer any on Saturday. Perhaps also Jeremy Hunt, what Jeremy Hunt is getting at though is that some of the details about Brexit could end up being a problem for Boris Johnson. He's already in a situation where high-profile Conservatives, including in Cabinet, have publicly disputed things that he has said. He has said, it's OK, we'll negotiate a, an implementation period with the EU, a period where everything stays the same while we try and get a free trade deal. That doesn't work, senior Conservatives have said, including Liam Fox, the Trade Secretary, unless the EU agrees to it. So some of his Brexit plans are also coming under heavy scrutiny here. OK, tomorrow, thank you very much indeed. Well, let's get the thoughts now of the Conservative MP, uh, Kwasi Kwarteng. Always nice right. to see you. Very but, good to see you, Adam. But really, shouldn't it be Boris Johnson coming out and explaining himself properly? Well, Boris has done uh, a lot of debates. He's done he hustings he's in done Birmingham. Well. He's going to come and do lots more hustings during the course of this election. And it's uh, a tightly fought election. I've never taken for granted that uh, he would necessarily win. Uh, and he's got to make his case to the country, and that's what he's doing. But, I mean... This may not, in the end, be a very serious incident which sure. took place uh, in, in, in his uh, girlfriend's home. But if he can't even clear this up and get it out of the way, how the hell as Prime Minister can he sort out a serious crisis? No, I understand that. But the police uh, have also got their opinion. They've said it was a private matter. Everyone is safe and well, and they want to move on. And I think that's well, the best way... Why doesn't he say that? I mean, all I'm, saying, all I'm saying to, is, is just, just statecraft. To, um, Surely, coming out... Saying that, move on, would be the way to do it, I think rather Boris's than all this view, hiding away well, and I'm, sending out surrogates. No, I think Boris's view is that we've got to be focused on the main issue, and the main issue undoubtedly is Brexit, and that's, the, uh, that's what the members will be interested in, that's what the country, frankly, uh, is very focused on, because we've seen how the Conservative Party uh, hasn't done very well in local elections, didn't do well in the European elections, and in order to put that right, 
we have to resolve Brexit, and Boris is 100% focused on that. So, what about his answers on Brexit, which is his 100% focus? He's written a column today saying, I'm going to take us out, come what may. He hasn't explained how he's so going to take us out, come it's, it's, For me, it's very simple. I've never really understood what the House of Commons was huffing and puffing about. Our default setting is leaving. If we, if we do nothing, we're leaving on the 31st of October. And that wasn't us. That was the date set by the EU. And as uh, Prime Minister, he is not going to do what Theresa May did, which was write a letter begging, essentially, for an extension mm. to the Article 50 period. Boris has said he won't do that. But so as that you know, this House of Commons has voted against leaving without a deal three times. Yes, and then, but, it, but the reason we extended was because the Prime Minister wrote that letter. Boris, the House of Commons can opine what it likes, but really? ultimately, can, ultimately, can... my understanding is that the way it's extended, the way the period is extended, yeah. is an agreement you, so you can between the, the government. House of Commons. The, the, the way it's, the extension worked last time yeah. was it was an agreement, it was a letter written right. by Theresa May asking for an extension. And they came back, they actually came back with a different date from the one that the Prime Minister... So the plan would be to ignore, and, to, and, to ignore and, the House of Commons. And so without... Uh, what I'm saying is that without a yeah. Prime Minister actually writing a letter for an extension, I have no idea, uh, and Oliver Letwin, I think, said the same thing. I don't see how an extension can be... Although some uh, people derived. say, and there's a lot about it in the newspapers this morning, that perhaps a dozen of your colleagues in those circumstances would not vote confidence in a Boris Johnson-led government. And that, so, would, that would certainly stop him becoming Prime Minister and doing My that, own view it? is that these MPs who've been selected by their constituencies as Conservative MPs, they're not there because of their own immense charisma, they're there because they are representatives of the Conservative Party. I would be very surprised if these people, one or two, like Dominic Grieve, may do this, but I'd be very surprised if they actually right, willfully... Where they actually man, a willfully. Great, great now, honor, Tobias, Tobias is a Hill. great friend of mine. I, I question whether he would actually willfully bring down a Conservative government on a vote of no confidence, uh, thereby ensuring. Well, if he or thought ushering... it was a Conservative government uh, led by a man who he didn't think was fit doing something against the will of Parliament, I mean, he might have quite a strong justification. Well, Tobias stood, as we all did, on a manifesto in 2017, which was committed not only to leaving the EU, but to leaving the single market and the customs union. I would find it very surprising if Tobias um, voted against the government that tried to do that. Well, we haven't heard that from Mr Johnson. We haven't heard how he's going to get around it. Now, what about these claims he's making that, for example, under WTO terms, tariffs wouldn't have to come in when, for example, uh, Liam Fox, uh, a lifelong Brexiteer, unlike Mr Johnson, is saying, well, actually, that's wrong, and well, he's the Trade Secretary. The first thing I'd say is that I think that Boris has been a lifelong Brexiteer. I remember reading articles... I remember uh, reading articles uh, where you say it would be uh, foolish uh, to leave the No, European saying that Brussels was a racket in the, in the 90s. Anyway, be that as it, as it may. I think the, the point that he's making, uh, and it's a broad point that I've campaigned for, well, is that we want to have unilateral free trade. We want to have well, free trade right. you know, with, uh, with, like with, with as many people. No, but that's, you know, but but that's I mean, something... The reality runs. is you've got the man who is a Brexiteer, Liam Fox, saying, and the Governor of the Bank of England, both saying, actually, Boris Johnson is talking nonsense. I, d I don't think he's uh, and talking nonsense. And, we, and we, don't have, we don't have a reply to that. I don't think he's talking nonsense. I think that uh, a free really, trade... Well, so, the, what, well, look, so that means the Governor of the Bank of England and Liam Fox are talking nonsense. Well, they're, 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 we all know that they have certain positions. The Governor of the Bank of England has openly said that he thinks Brexit is a And Liam Fox is a lifelong And has been wrong. And, and Liam uh, Fox and, you know, so they're all, they're is a very able politician. They're all politically motivated. He's a very Real able politician. Every, every reality that, that you no, but, disagree with, that Boris Johnson disagrees with, is politically motivated and therefore can be dismissed. Of course dismissed. it is. I mean, Liam Fox is campaigning actively for Jeremy Hunt. He's his chief surrogate at the moment. Of course he's not going to say that what uh, Boris is saying <laughs> makes sense. Wait, Liam Fox is the chief surrogate he's for Jeremy Hunt. He's entitled to, you know, of support he who he wants. Of course the he is. The fact is, he has the job yeah. as a sworn government minister of handling international trade after Brexit. He's already had three years in the job, and he says what Boris Johnson uh, is saying is wrong, and you're saying he's only saying that because he's supporting well, he Jeremy is. Hunt. I'm, 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 what I'm saying is, is true. Uh, there are other ministers who are in those departments that are supporting uh, Boris. Graham Stewart is an undersecretary in the same department. He's supporting well, well, Boris. Name me, name me one he's minister saying, who agrees with Boris Johnson's analysis the, publicly, the John, who's the, coming out and saying uh, these things. Uh, Graham Stewart is uh, someone who's working in the department that Liam heads, and is supporting Boris. So there's a, there's a difference of view, OK? And there's a, a, a keenly well, thought... Uh, a I'm keenly sorry, thought, there, there is actually a difference of fact. No. And if the people handling the facts, the Governor of the Bank of England, our Brexit Secretary and independent experts, 
say that, you know, these lawyers for Brexit or whatever they're called are talking specious nonsense, Mr Johnson should come out and explain why that's not the case, I think shouldn't he? the broad view that Boris is taking is that we should have a unilateral, a free trade approach with as many partners wants, as possible. But the question and is the reality. And that's the basis you of the negotiation. You just said he's going that's to ignore, the just said he's going to ignore Parliament. Like that. That's you the did. basis of the negotiation. Ignore Parliament and take us out without a deal. The people of this country are entitled to know the sure. consequences of that so, decision. So, Adam, I said that the, the legal default position is that we're going to leave on the 31st of October. That, yeah. was, the point. that was the point. And I the was consequences making. of that are... And, and, and the that tariffs go up on day one, right? No, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. There may be a situation where we could have an agreement with the EU. But not we haven't got the whole point is you just said he's going to leave without an agreement. No. So there's, there's, there's a managed, there's what has been called a managed no deal. There could well be the case. Well, we how does that, that We can't prejudge that. There could be a separate agreement on tariffs. Well, the for EU, the EU said there could be a separate. At the moment, well, the, the EU, EU always say they always say they're, they're a good negotiator. Yeah, well, they've been they right over say, the past three years, and they haven't been well, right about everything. And we've been they have right about their position. They have shifted their position. I mean, they're now looking at alternative arrangements when last year they said that it was impossible. So now they have changed. They don't. So how is this going to be achieved in, in between now and Halloween? Bearing, I think, I think there's a, bearing in mind Boris Johnson's not even a job to the end of July. I agree. Uh, then we've got a holiday. Then we've got the formation of party conferences. Then we've got the formation of a new commission. And by that stage, uh, we've hit Halloween and we're out without any of this being I think there is a big time pressure, but this debate shows that there's still, you know, some things that we can actually deliver. I think we can deliver uh, some form of deal. We can have a, a, a deal on tariffs. We can have a deal certainly on citizens' rights. There are elements of the deal that I think we can enshrine mm -hmm. in law. And then we, can, we, we should be able to leave on the 31st of October. Rightly or wrongly, do you think the Boris Johnson uh, bandwagon is in trouble now? No, I don't think it is at all. I think, I mean, I was speaking to constituents uh, yesterday. They said that the domestic incident was a, a put-up job. It was clearly politically motivated. It was sold, I think, the story to The Guardian. Hang on, wait a minute. Um, yeah, the, the neighbours were politically motivated. That's, that's oh, what people well, are saying. On, wait a minute. They had political opinions. Yeah, and they were politically... It doesn't mean they're politically motivated. Look, I'm not saying I'm saying this. I mean, you I'm know, if you were arrested what... by a policeman... For you, you get, because you've done something wrong, and he happens to be a Remainer. He's not politically motivated so in arresting you. all I'm you. saying is that this is what the members are saying. Now, you may well be right, but that's what the members... Well, you, there is a but perception. But are you standing by what there the members a, are saying? Not, are, you, are you saying that this incident was, in your view, brought to the attention of the police because the neighbours were politically it's motivated? It's irrelevant what I think. Members who are going to cast the vote feel that there is a political motivation behind So if you can pull the wool this. over your eyes for long the, enough, it'll be OK. They feel that there's a political motivation behind this. I don't think it'll affect their vote. And they are very focused on Brexit. This is where we f f fell down. This is why we've got yeah. the Brexit Where's party. It? This ultimately is why Theresa May resigned. But it's a pity the main man won't give us any that's answers why on Brexit we're having if the, the members are so focused on Brexit. So isn't the it? members are focused the on Brexit. He was uh, in the hustings on, in Birmingham. He was open to questioning there. And we're looking to win uh, with the members, which is this okay. last well, phase. Well, Jeremy Hunt says he's not answering his questions. Well, Jeremy Hunt has got questions to answer about his own No Deal position. I mean, he, I, I hate to bring it up, well, but he's flip-flopped all over the place. But to be it. fair, he's in, prepared to answer in Addis, Well, no one's really uh, put it to him, but in Addis Ababa, he said well, No Deal was better than No Brexit. Then he said well, No Deal was I'm sure I'm very happy to ask him about all of that. And things. I know I'm sure you will. will be I'm asking sure him will. about that here on Sky I'm sure News, you will. as they were on the radio this morning. Anyway, thank you very much indeed.